Hello, in this video we are going to cover how to pass parameters between scenes. One of the reasons you might want to do this, take this example. You have a game scene and a game over scene. The user dies and they've got a X amount of score, let's say it's 55, and you want to send that to the game over scene so we can be verified. There's a bunch of things you can do with it. You can display it. If it's higher than their current high score, you could say it's, it's your highest high score. If it's not, you could say good luck next time, something along the lines of that. And if it is higher, you can submit it to the leaderboard, you can display it, you can store it locally. So there's a bunch of stuff that you would want to do. And that's just the one scenario. There's other reasons as well to do with level select, um, character select, all those other stuff. Passing parameters, it is pretty simple uh, to do. So first of all, what we are actually going to do is get rid of all the default sort of code that you have in the scene. I'm going to create our own custom scene. So let's just get rid of this var scene one. Actually, before I do this, so I want to do a shout out to a community member on the Coco Studio X forum. They helped me actually figure out how to do passing parameters between scenes. I'm not going to mention their name because I haven't asked them yet if they don't mind me giving them some credit and mentioning their name. If they say they're okay with mentioning their name, then I'll put it in the description. If not, thank you random person, which I obviously know, but you don't. So let's continue with this. Var scene one equals cc dot scene dot extend And we need a semicolon there. CTOR, which is the constructor function. And in here, all we're going to do is this dot underscore super, this dot init, and then we're going to put a comma here. We're going to do an init method, which is just going to initialize our scene. It's going to be very basic, but obviously you can modify according to your game. In here, I'm going to put a size, and this is going to be uh, the window size. So this is just going to be used for positioning, nothing else. Var close, I mean var button equals new cc dot menu. Item image. So I'm basically going to use a button when clicked. You'll go to the next scene, and once you're in that scene, we're going to just going to log out the parameters that we're passing. Res dot close normal underscore png comma res dot close selected underscore png. function and now this function is basically going to be what is called when the button is clicked so for this I'm going to put var scene equals new scene 2 and the scene 2 will be created in the scene2.js file which we'll do in a moment in here I was going to pass in a couple of parameters 6 and 67.9, you know what, I'm going to do 3.14159, so pi to five decimal places. And this will be printed out in the other scene to prove that it has actually been sent. I'm going to do cc.director.replace scene. This works with run scene as well, if that's what you want to do from, most likely if you're doing run scene, you would use it from the main.js file. And now that we've done the function, we can just put this semicolon. Do, 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 do. I'm not really going to be discussing much about how buttons work because that's not the purpose of this tutorial. Dot attribute. So, what we're going to set for the attributes are its positioning. So, x is size dot width, which is the screen size width divided by 2 basically centered in the x-axis y and we're going to do the same c size dot height though divided by two size centered in the y-axis and for the anchor x we're going to set 0 0.5 and we're going to do that for the anchor y as well 
I've noticed I spelt height wrong, I've done hoy or hey or however you would pronounce that. Don't think it's a real word. Do 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 height. There we go. Now semicolon. Now in here it's gonna do a menu. So new cc dot menu and the menu is just gonna be constructed of the button itself. That that's all. Menu dot x we're gonna set this to zero because we position the actual item or menu item manually and this dot add child menu one okay so this isn't going to work at the moment simply because if we go to our main.js we need to change this to scene one and now we can run this okay seems to be some sort of error do, 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 let's have a look what the error is what did it say uh, 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 there we go uh, syntax error missing semicolon before statement send hmm, the semicolon oh there we go there needs to be an assignment op operator so if we run that now we should get our scene with our button on it so there we go obviously if I were to press it it's not going to do anything at the moment and to prevent any crashing I'll just leave it if we go to scene.2.js gonna do the same just get rid of any default code we got in there to keep it simple you're gonna copy and paste this into our new scenes and what we're going to do is actually just get rid of this right here like so rename it to scene 2 and now we need to put the variable name so var1 you can call it whatever you want I'm just calling them var1 and you need to put in the init method as well var2 and finally just put it there var1 var2 and what I'm going to do is cc dot log var1 colon and that's going to have var1 variable there we're going to put var2 here and replace that with var2 and to distinguish it a little more in terms of the scenes we're just going to add a label which will just say scene2 that's all it's going to say so var so is equal cc dot win size var hello label equals new cc dot label ttf and I'm going to put in here is scene2 for the font I'm going to put Arial and 38 now let's set the positioning so hello label dot x equals size dot width divided by two so let's copy and paste this to save some time height oh spelt it wrong again and now let's change that to y we know we can just add this as a child so dot add child hello label even though we are only just logging out the variables that we're passing in you can do what you want you could put it in this label actually I recommend doing that once you've done this tutorial you've got it working put it in the label itself so you can manipulate it because we're just passing in two numbers multiply them as well do some maths so that's the best way to learn just mess about with it so if we just go back so we got 6 and 3.1459 run it okay so I'm just gonna move this over a little bit so in this console this event log when I click this button we all see two v v logs come out so if I click it okay we had zero logs so let's just try and identify why we had no logs hmm let's get rid of that it, it is a duplicate but I doubt that would be the issue, but let's have a look anyway. 
Okay, what do you know? The duplicate variable was the problem, so let's just rerun it. Actually, you know what? I'm going to increase the size of that, delete that. Just resize it so we can see it better. So, so when I click here, there you go, it says var1 is 6, 3.1459. And just to confirm the variables that we passed in were 6 and 3.1459. So that is how you pass parameters between scenes in Cocos 2 djs If you have any questions, feel free to message us at support. Uh, I mean, post it at sonarlearning.co.uk forward slash questions.php. There'll be a link in the description to that, so you don't need to bother trying to remember it. Plus, there will also be a link in the description to a post on our forums which discuss discusses parameters being passed in to different scenes, so you can check out the written code via that. And as usual, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.